Hello everybody, welcome to our webinar. So it's been a while because we were having a little bit of break between the groups. And as you probably noticed, we had quite a lot of success with our previous one. Uh, so welcome everybody. Today we're going to be building this 3D model. Uh, so to uh, make it a little bit easier to look at or to uh, get you a little bit more acquainted, this is our goal for today's webinar. Uh, and obviously we're going to be going through all of the steps. I'm going to try to uh, to explain my logic, why I'm starting the way I'm, I am. And we're just going to continue building. Uh, so I'm hoping that everybody's going to enjoy it. Uh, meanwhile, remember that you're uh, welcome to ask questions. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tamino. Uh, nice to see you, man. Uh, now, uh, Kamaljit, Mohammed, and Abdin, also Carlos, welcome everybody. I see that uh, everybody's just slowly gathering in and I love that. So uh, let's make sure to get us started. So for those of you that just joined in for the first time, my name is Mike and I'm a teacher for Viz Academy. Viz Academy is a rendering school that will teach you how to create photorealistic visualizations in less than seven weeks. You can check out our website, that's Viz Academy Co. UK, to get a little bit more info of uh, about what our students did and you can also uh, see their uh, testimonials because we've got quite a lot of those uh, so uh, if you want some amazing images uh, you can visit also our Instagram where we post um, work created by our students and those are always welcome so uh, also shout out to every student of mine that just joined in I love you guys uh, so yeah, let's get started. Um, meanwhile, if you're wondering what software you were using, we're using 3ds Max and potentially we're going to be using Corona Renderer uh, to uh, render this small beauty. Uh, so references that we're going to need are not going to be that hard to get. You have to uh, type in the name of the chair or any object that you're going to be uh, trying to model in uh, Google and look for the best photos uh, you can get. Uh, so in a minute, cases you're going to see that uh, not all images not all um, let's say not all references are going to be that um, important for us uh, so what I uh, what you absolutely need for this type of work is this type of image frontal shot is the money shot we can really get the most info out of it but obviously having this second one is going to give us a little bit more info about the curvature of the object and if we look a little bit closer you're going to also notice that we've got all of those sewings around here and we're going to be building those online so buckle up for that um love your work love you love you from pakistan Thank you very much. And I'm going to teach you a cool method on how to create all of those small dots uh, that, that kind of sewing uh, that I believe is just a little bit of an overkill, but why not just add it to impress everybody around? Uh, so we're going to also need a um, shot that's 45 or similar uh, degrees uh, to see the details. Um, so let's get started uh, first thing first we're going to obviously uh, reset our 3ds max or start with a fresh one i'm not going to be using any plugins here or i'm at least going to try to minimize any usage of those because i'm already so acquainted to some of them that sometimes i just do it uh without uh, any caution so uh first thing i'm going to just create a simple plane because that's going to ensure that Whatever we're going to be working with is going to be on a plane. And uh, well, since we're going to be working with images that are in a square format, I'm just going to go ahead and add them in. So allow me to just uh, transfer a few objects from one folder to another because I just noticed that uh, one of the resources was misplaced due to me being a little bit sloppy. Uh, so we got all of those and we're just going to uh, jump in and we've got our frontal shot so it doesn't matter whether we're going to be placing it on y or x axis it's always going to pretty much be the same for us uh, but uh, you do you we're going to be 
good uh, regardless. So let's move this a little bit further away uh, just to make sure that the scene is tidy. I'm going to put this on zero. So if I'm going to be using symmetry, it's going to be easier for me. Copy the same image with shift. So press left shift to make sure that it's working. And then we're going to move our element here. Uh, just to make this even easier for you guys, so let me just turn on one of those um, programs that will allow you to uh, see what exactly I'm clicking in case uh, somebody's a little bit newer to the, pro to the program. I'm obviously going to try to explain every step I take, um, but we're going to make sure that this is not only beginner friendly, but also just a little bit fun. Uh, so let's drop that second image in and we now have our basis. We're mostly going to be actually working with this one because the back shell is going to give us the most information. But what we have to uh, take into consideration is that we cannot really trace this 100% uh, just within uh, 3ds Max boundaries because we obviously know that we can start with a simpler object, either with a box that's going to be pretty much covering this area, and then we're going to be able to build the back the detail and so on and so forth. But we can also start with an object that's going to have a very similar shape to this one. Uh, sphere is out of the question because we would have to do something like that, cut it up, it's going to be too much guessing. Uh, so in this case, I believe that the easiest thing we can work with is going to be actually a cylinder because you can see that the base of this object is actually cylindrical because from what I understand, this is also going to be um, the type of chair or armchair that's going to be um, adjustable. So for that reason, we're going to be starting with our cylinder. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so we're pretty much going to need approximately 16 sides for this object. So we can just trace this and see that it's really going to be easy to do it that way, although we're obviously going to have to adjust some elements. And yes, we're going to be also eyeballing some of the details because we don't have the perfect measurements at this time. Uh, so let's just get started and no more drawing. Let's just uh, go ahead and start our work. Uh, from what I can see, my folder is for some reason uh, on the top, let's just move it aside. So let's start with a cylinder. I want to start with a cylinder that's going to be the base of my object. By default, in 3ds Max, you're going to be met with cylinders that are 16 sides. So I'm just going to go ahead and, sorry, 18 sides. We're going to change this to 16. Uh, return means enter, and we're just going to type in one and also apply this. E for rotation, rotate it so the base is going to be in the right position. Uh, just to clean this up, I'm going to make sure that the plane I'm using for the object is going to be nice and tidy. Uh, so you can pretty much see that it's already pretty much done, right? Uh, hi Mike, hope you are doing good. Thank you, Asim. Nice to have you. Uh, always nice to have uh, some some returning audience. Um, if I make Fres do things and I want to unfreeze uh, just one thing um, for them, how do can I, how can I do it? Okay, so you mean freeze. Um, so in that case, I would strongly advise you to use a layer exporter to make sure that uh, objects in your scene are going to be freezable and unfreezable by list. So you pretty much will be deciding what you want to unfreeze anyway. So how about just starting your um, layers and um, uh, sorry, creating your uh, how about creating your layers and freezing those objects instead because you're going to be deciding what object you want to unfreeze anyway. So you want to find it on a list. That's when naming your objects is going to really come in handy. So base. And now, um, since we've got our base, I'm going to make sure that the base is slightly lower. And we're also not going to uh, look at the height because right now, we're using some kind of preposterous uh, proportions, sorry, um, scale because we're later going to be scaling this object if we need to. But it's all about uh, having a little bit of fun with 3ds Max. Uh, so let's just continue. Now, since I've got the base now, I'm going to make sure to copy it and just apply this copy slightly above my main object. Uh, convert this object into a double poly just for funsies. And we're going to start uh, by moving some of the elements 
further down the line to the top. And now this is going to be pretty much where we are really going to start modeling because our first step really is going to add uh, is going to be adding a two by two modifier or three by three modifier. The reason why I'm doing it is very simple. Uh, I'm going to add a two by two modifier to be able to do that. Uh, I'm pretty much going to move those elements here. So I'm pretty much already establishing the whole object at the same time. I'm also going to move this a little bit forward because obviously we're going to be cutting through this part. Uh, so the bottom also is going to follow in a second, but we're going to make this easier for everybody who understand in a second, obviously. So convert this object to editable poly again to apply the two by two modifier. And now we're left with this, uh, let's say teapot or whatever that is. Um, it doesn't look that uh, opening, it doesn't look that good yet, but we're going to make it look good. So um, now what this object needs is those two back parts. So um, for that, I'm going to add and apply some kind of lines. And uh, just to make this absolutely clear, I have not I have not calculated any elements uh, prior to uh, this webinar, I'm pretty much modeling this live. Uh, so we're going to uh, experiment along the way. So if I make a mistake, we're going to go back a little bit. So now you have noticed that I'm, uh, I have uh, deleted half of my model. Why did I do that? Uh, because we're going to be using symmetry method in a second. And I don't want to move too many vertices, I want to have a little bit easier time working with this model. But I probably will be regretting that move later on because I should have also prepared a few steps extra. So now we're going to just move this part somewhere around here. The funny part is that I'm still retaining the cylindrical shape that we started with. So moving this part only on the y axis is really going to be optimal solution for me. Because again, it's just the simpler way of doing things. So again, double click on that line. And we can do exactly the same move here. Uh, try to go a little bit uh, further than you need for those um, curves. Because obviously, a turbo smooth or any other modifier that we're going to be using later on is going to take care of that. Uh, and it's going to smoothen it out. So we're going to lose some of those edges that are poking out. Okay, now I cannot see anything and wireframe is obviously going to be a problem. So Alt X to make this object more transparent. Okay, so here we can see that the front is a little bit wonky. So we need to make sure that uh, we fix this. Uh, so what's the best way of fixing it? Uh, probably just scaling because we can grab those elements that we're interested in and try to scale them, uh, scale them flat. So let's just go ahead and uh, now scale them. So this is going to be a bit obnoxious because we're obviously moving some of the vertices the way that we didn't anticipate for a little bit earlier. But this is also going to be good for the, um, looking at the reference because we have a slight curvature going on here, but not too much. So it's, it's a round object, obviously. So we don't want this to be fully flat. But we need to this line to be straight. So uh, that is why we should probably go a little bit further with that scaling and try to actually focus on scaling the lines or that part that one part flat because that's going to be the important element here. And we're going to be moving the elements back into the circle. So it's easier for us to control. Okay, this is perfect. Now this line looks a little bit again, very hard to control. But if you're going to be smart, and I know you are, let's press Shift X while in our editable poly, this is going to enable constraints. Uh, so whatever I do with this edge now, it's going to be constrained by the edges. So uh, we can, for example, scale this down, and it's going to straighten this element as much as it can within the boundaries of this said edge. Not too much, but uh, it's going to also allow us to get that out of the way. And voila, we've got really nicely created object. And again, at this point, you probably would prefer to have those lines straight as well, but it's not going to be necessary. So let's go back to our viewport. And here we can see that everything 
is adjustable right now so we can move those elements up and down if we need to so i'm just going to move it here now this is my front right so my edge or my um let's say that this part is probably supposed to be here so we're going to have to move this element forward but we need to do it in a smart way because we're working with a side of our object so we're definitely not going to have enough as um, let's say enough polygons to go around so i'm just going to go to my two and stretch it slightly and we're done so we're pretty much in the clear but i'm now going to be adjusting the top alone uh, so um, i might have went a little bit too far at the very beginning but that's not going to be an issue at all so those two polygons are going to be our front uh, for now i don't need them but i will keep them because i just want to make sure that there's a little bit of a space uh, for me to work with later on let's uh, make sure that those are also straightened so it's going to be just ever so slightly easier for me to work with the topology and now we're going to be unfreezing our um, um, constraint and we're just going to keep on modeling one step at a time so we can just move the elements one step at a time and you can see that we're now getting a really nice curvature here so you're probably wondering um, what, how are we going to add this element and why are we really uh, focusing on uh, tracing this shape so much while the front is so much more interesting? Well, mostly because uh, right now, if we're going to add enough detail at the bottom and at the top, uh, we're going to have way easier time transitioning to the um, more uh, detail-dense elements. So we're just going to go ahead and move the bottom as well. So we're going to have to stretch it forward. Sorry, I misclicked. One, and let's just move this part as well. Okay, so some of the lines are getting a little bit cheeky. So we're just going to make sure to, again, constrain them slightly. So Shift X is on, and let's just make sure to straighten those out. So why are, why are we doing it even? Because it's really not, not that necessary to do so. Well, mostly because it's going to be easier for me to control those elements. And we're going to then refine all of those edges by pressing Alt and 2. So they will be, let's say, straightened to some uh, extent just by the algorithm uh, built into the ES Max. So we're just going to have a little bit easier time working with it. Okay, now the object is way too slim. Uh, so, oh, I forgot to delete that, sorry. Uh, the object is way too slim. Uh, need a tutorial on how to model a wall hung toilet. Uh, what uh, sh that shape is killing me. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, I haven't modeled a, a toilet online yet. Uh, so let me know what kind of model that is and uh, email, us, uh, email us some nice uh, suggestions maybe we're going to be able to uh, do that but i'm guessing you're probably having uh, you're probably having some hard time with uh, the bowl uh, so in that case i'm just going to give you a heads up that most of those shapes uh, can be done like this uh, because let's be honest there is no uh, groundbreaking technology uh, new design that would absolutely revolutionize uh, the industry uh, since like forever so you pretty much need to do that uh, then you've got the shape you're going to be adding the bridge so you can just go on and voila you've got the most hard the hardest part of it uh, done but this is going to be really about the topology later on now let's go ahead and switch to front view because because we obviously need to work on this uh well a lot and um, so we need to make this nice and uh, fluffy so first i'm going to also reduce the amount of polygons here and let's start with the same um treatment as we did a second ago okay so um i'm not going to be fully stretching it up until i reach just those lines here so this one line that was straightened and this one in particular is going to be in the right position so we're going to have it exactly where we need it so i'm pretty much confident that this is going to be the right location maybe a little bit uh, closer to the um to the edge maybe somewhere around here perfect so this is the line and i wanted it to be here so pretty much easy so far right um 
for your enjoyment we're going to rotate this so you're going to have a little bit easier time understanding what i'm doing so we can also rotate that just for funsies and now let's see so we've got this object and we want to make sure that this line and the bottom line are going to be um, neatly working for us so again we're going to be using the same tools we did use so far two by two and we're going to adjust it up until we reach this point we don't need to worry about one or two vertices because at that point it's not going to be that much of a big deal that big of a deal for us to have some kind of problems uh, along the way and you can see that again we're just adjusting some of the elements double click and two by two modifier okay you probably are wondering hey mike is it really necessary for us to always add the modifiers the way you do you look for them on a list no and i'm going to show you how to speed things up but but because i like to work with beginners i don't want you to see my uh, full ui with all of my shortcuts because at that at that point uh, my tutorials are going to be more confusing than they should be so we're just going to go ahead and click here show buttons and we can now go ahead and configure modifier sets so for example i can type in ffd and type it in here then i can go for turbo smooth because i'm going to be using it at some point then we can go for something like noise and also add it in so noise and we can go on uh, forever with uh, all of the modifiers and add all of the modifiers that we're going to be using here because those are really not going to cost us anything but i don't want to make this too complicated so i'm going to just go for two okay and we've got two modifiers that we can now quickly call upon if we need to and that's going to be the fastest way of doing it okay so now we've got the bottom but the bottom is a little bit thick and we need to make sure that it's not going to be problematic so let's go ahead and add this bridge here so now we're going to just retopologize the bottom so it's going to be easier for us to work with and i'm not exactly retopologizing it uh, to some kind of higher degree i'm just making sure that i've got some topology to work with and saving myself a little bit of time by uh, making sure that those elements are neatly aligned and or connected so now we're going to be using cut tool to make sure that the, all of the polygons are there or if we're extra lazy and you know what i feel lazy today let's just delete this because this part of the model is never going to be seen and we just don't need to focus on it since uh, this is not a part of the model that anybody is going to be looking at mike have you seen the file that i sent you uh, that my question was how to make a model if the floor plan resolution is different and elevation image resolution is different um no i haven't seen that but uh, i'll uh, look into that uh, is the name of your email um is your name in the email because uh, i'm going to have to uh, check that out um, just to make sure that we didn't uh, miss it or it didn't go to the spam or something sir do you agree that ai will make a fortless program to make more easy for non-creative students I think that AI is going to be a tool like anybody, anything else, uh, because um, AI can potentially now write code like programming. Uh, did um, um, programmers lose their jobs on mass? No, because before you really get into any kind of programming, you have to know how to program. And this is just a tool that helps you that, do that and no there's never going to be okay maybe at some point in thousand years i mean like in 25 years let's say there is going to be just a click of a button ai that's going to be doing everything for you but at the moment it's it's just impossible to imagine that somebody like me or you we're going to say okay i need an infrastructure for a server or for my company and i need servers okay ai do it for me that's not going to happen um same goes with architecture yes it can do some magical tricks of um putting furniture in your uh, uh in your sh in your shot or uh change the color of your eyes 
wow but this is really going to be something that yes it's going to be useful but it's never going to be a substitute for a human maybe you're um, if you're really going to be bad at it uh, at your job maybe at that point maybe um, one person is going to be able to do job of two because it's faster but it's never going to be a substitute because uh, there is a very nice saying um i don't know who said it exactly but to allow ai to take our place our clients would first need to know what they want and this is just all, all there is to it if a human is going to be smart enough to know what he needs yeah maybe but this is not going to happen forever and believe me i worked with many of my clients i'm not trying to tell uh, say that uh, they're dumb or in any way but uh, they also come to you as a designer because uh, really what's going to be important to understand is you as a 3d artist you're not only there to create pretty pictures uh, you're also there there to help with the design to some extent because you're going to be asked a lot of questions what do you think what uh, what do you think looks better how do we do this how do we do that there's a lot of that uh, doubt that's going to be just part of a human nature and there's no way that any of your clients ever are going to be just Im um, immune to that so yeah uh, i am not afraid i embrace the ai overlords that are coming <laughs> no honestly skynet please uh, no honestly um if anything uh, is going to happen it's going to be a tool not your uh, demise so don't worry about it it's going to be just something that will be helpful to all of us okay now we're going to be doing the top and i want to do it quickly uh, so first we can just sh uh, shrink this a little bit so we're going to have all the details we needed and you can also see that here we kind of don't have the details uh, in this area um, or we should probably split it at this moment and we're going to be doing that in a moment because uh, at that point we kind of need to do that extra element around uh, because otherwise we're not going to be building the model we all came here for so how do we do that uh, first we can just select those elements and detach them which is going to be optimal solution here because then we're going to have to deal with all of those parts and yes it's going to be annoying but we uh, looking at the reference and you can see that this goes in and it kind of melts inside so it's a little bit smaller there so what we need to make sure of is that this line transitions and we're just going to have a nice sitting area in here that also transitions here we're going to go like this and like that so how do we get that we can do it by either creating some kind of topology that will allow this so we're pretty much going to go like this and all the lines are going to automatically align for us so we need to do something in uh, in a similar manner uh, so how about we do that so first thing let's clear out my doors and okay uh, we need to make sure that this line goes 45 degrees so i might as well just detach this element okay and since we're on this uh, spot uh, i'm just going to unhide everything and this part at the moment might actually be a little bit unnecessary and i have might have created it a little a little bit preemptively so i'm going to delete it uh, because i believe it's going to be easier for me to connect those elements together that way so at this point we're going to be just um, eyeballing some elements so shift and drag it downwards and we're going to have this connection so at this point i'm going to target weld one element to another and we pretty much have a huge leap around here which doesn't look that uh, aesthetic and we need to make sure that it does kind of look aesthetic so we're going to be moving those parts downwards but this is still not yet as fluffy and puffy as we need it so we're going to fix it in a second so let's make sure that all of the elements are going to be nice and straight so z and sh uh, and just scale it down and we can just uh, and, uh, continue now let's select those elements and here since we already aligned that one part we're just going to be uh, going for a target weld and targeting welding um is going on now 
Okay, so uh, since we need that extra line in here, we could just transition by adding inset. So inset is going to pretty much do that for us. But at this point, it's going to be a little bit harder to do so because obviously it's going to cost us a bit of our model's integrity. So I'm going to shift and uh, alt, alt one and shift it. So this way it's going to aut automatically just create the curvature. Uh, so it's going to be easier for me to work with. And now this line is a little bit out of the place, but we're not going to be that worried about it because it's supposed to be fluffy. So now we're going to target weld those elements still. So we're going to continue target weld here, target weld there, one, two, three. So we're just added this whole alignment without really uh, moving a finger and it's so much easier for us. Uh, we could also move it a little bit further so it's going to be better aligned again. So let's make sure that it's going to be on the edge and let's just move it so uh, just slightly. So those lines are going to create the nice cutout that we're going to be doing. And uh, at this point, I don't need this to be um, big because I just want this to have a bit of uh, that uh, extra effect because uh, obviously the, the more subtle effect we're going to be adding, the better because at this point, if I add Turbo Smooth, you can see that everything really nicely covers and it's going to be uh, pretty much a shell for us. But uh, this is also going to require that cut in. And this is why we went for this whole trouble of making this extra line. So double click it and we're going to make sure to go for extrude and go lower, go inside. And now we're pretty much in the clear where we can now add Turbo Smooth and look at that. We just made exactly what we wanted. Um, so let's go back a little bit. Let's clean up the mesh before we really add any turbo smooths. And also I, I can go for Alt 1 and add another line here and another line there. So there's even more curvature on my object. And the funny part is that I'm getting that detail absolutely for free with Turbo Smooth. I'm probably going to have to adjust it. And yes, obviously, we're going to be deleting half of our, my model in a second, but not yet. Uh, Mike, my viewport freezes more often, even if I have 32 gigabytes of RAM and RTX uh, 360. Is it? Uh, this is not an auto backup uh, problem. When was the... Um, what is the sometime hang? Um, so if you're experiencing that, that could be um, the reason for that might be your hard drive. Uh, in some cases, it may be looking for some kind of textures. So make sure that you're not going to be using or you're not going to have too many textures that are scattered in folder within a folder within a folder within a folder, because then 3ds Max is going to be looking for those assets, and it's just going to take them take it a little bit longer. Uh, so it's obviously going to be slowing down the overall performance of your work. So that will that would be probably the best solution I can uh, suggest to you. Uh, so okay, let's make sure that everything is working nicely. And now uh, at this point, we're going to be also adding the middle part because uh, looking at the reference, we kind of need to go inside and kind of uh, go like this, where this element is like that. And we need to just create the inner part and connect it with our chair. So yeah, we're going to have to do it. Um, we've got a lot of options to how to uh, apply this measure. We're either going to calculate how many vertices are we working with. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what? Let's make it easier. Let's just shift drag it with uh, just shift go down. Wow, that was easy. Now scale it down again and scale it down again. This is also going to be the moment where you kind of want to decide what kind of topology we're uh, going for. So I want this to be easy and I don't want this to be, well, um, too hard to control. So I'm going to just move this vertex and connect it to this targeted element, perfect. And now I can connect, uh, continue going down but now I'm going to scale it up, uh, scale it down. So it's going to be easier for me. And this is pretty much going to allow me to get nice uh, finish on this part. So again, let's collapse those two lovers together. 
collapse and now do we go all the way to the bottom we could because in what's stopping us from doing it and if we go too far we're going to go uh, too much into that line so this could be one of the reasons why we shouldn't also this part is supposed to be going inwards so it's easier to do it with just a few vertices to control it even better so i'm going to hang on to that but if we want to, we can be less precise and also do uh, all, pretty much the same trick, but go lower again, scale it down slightly, and this way we're going to avoid any problems. Uh, so target weld, move it here, and this way we're going to have the simplest model ever. Uh, but I want to use all of my vertices because why should we add them if they're going to be redundant? Uh, so uh, another trick that I like is shift X, move your elements up until they meet the top, let it, let go. And now we've got imprint of the same shape. So I can just continue and make this a, a transition a little bit smoother. Uh, so let's move that alt two to add a little bit more curvature. Look how easy that is. Uh, also, we're going to just add it here. Perfect. Now, I'm probably going to be making this part a little bit thinner uh, because I don't like how thick it uh, got at this moment. So let's just move this slightly here. Maybe we're going to move that vertex as well. So this is now me just perfecting the model. But honestly, I believe we're, we've got it. We really got it. Uh, so at this point, we're going to double click on one of the edges check if we haven't really messed it up too much so we did we want to select all the edges that we have shift and just sorry uh, shift x to unlock it scale it down and i'm going to now align everything up to one of the vertices that i had earlier so i'm not going to uh, lose my symmetry edge okay so since this is now done we're going to add the symmetry so select uh, another trick that's going to be very handy for you guys selecting one of the edges and adding symmetry to it means that the symmetry is going to start in that point at that point so yeah we also should probably use a different um, axis but so far it looks nice oh i must have not scaled enough because the symmetry is doing a little bit of a um, problem here but i'm going to fix it in a second so no problems um, actually that is a little bit peculiar so let's scale it up uh, scale it down i mean now we should get rid of it we did okay so um our next step is unhide every element of our model because we still need to cut those elements and make the bottom to make it um it's nvme drive um mike my viewport okay hello is is uh, a team from nigeria thank you for all your tutorials they uh, have helped in terms of my modeling skills keep up the good work bless you thank you that's so nice uh, really appreciate those words uh so asim if that is the case um, what is the polygon count in your model because that's also going to play a role overall uh, so okay let's see our reference because now we're going to be doing the frontal part okay i need to move those vertices a little bit so move them down scale this and we're pretty much going to be in the clear uh, let's continue okay now the this is also going to be an aftermath of uh, me modeling this earlier in the way i did it so we're just going to move this part in and we just did most of the work uh, that was pretty much the hard part uh, okay so we kind of need this element here to also continue so i'm just going to move it there delete this part and probably we could just yeah i think we can let's just do that and that bottom is not necessarily needed but thanks to the fact that we were extremely lazy I am now going to be able to turbo smooth this and it's going to actually look really nice and it's also going to be covering some parts of the model so let's switch to double view so here we're going to be looking at the clay mode and here we're going to be looking at the shaded mode so it's going to be easier for us to follow now we're still going to be adjusting some of the elements to not uh, make them too obnoxious but i believe that we're going to be moving some of the vertices um around here to make sure that we're going to get the right edge okay 
love it. Now we could also apply another line around here. So it's pretty much going to retain the shape a little bit better, but it's also going to give us this impression like those are actually aligning just like in our original uh, object. We can then move some of those vertices in the original. For example, we can go for uh, the uh, show end result. Now I'm going to be able to move the vertices to make them a little bit squished in if I want to. Uh, so let's make those vertices move. So sorry, uh, I'm just getting a little bit. Okay, so now that moves, this element moves, and we can just continue moving some of the edges so that it appears like we're deforming that model. And we actually are. Uh, so okay, looks really nice. The bottom, we don't need to continue it uh, till the uh, very end, uh, because it's not going to be necessary for us. Okay, I see that I might have, yes, I did scale it a little bit wrong in at some moment. Okay, so we're going to have to fix it. Did I? No, oh, it looks good. So we're going to have to make sure that those arms are going to follow the curvature a little bit better uh, before we turbo smooth because there's something going on here and I don't like it. So let's move this part a little bit, this part there, and that part here. So most likely I was just not paying enough attention and we're, we had a little bit of a mishap there. But now everything is back to normal. Okay, so our first pillow is done. Let's copy it and use it as our base for the second one. Uh, so hello from Uzbekistan, uh, first time on your stream. Uh, thank you very much. Kadibulo, <laughs> that's really nice. Our studio, hello, uh, welcome. Hello, Mike from Pakistan. Hello, hello. I remember you actually. So uh, that's really nice to have you. Okay, so here we've got uh, our object. So and we're going to be using it as our base for the pillow. Double click, sh scale it down until we sandwich it. And uh, now we're going to be putting it exactly where the pillow is supposed to be. We can also allow it to overlap slightly. So it's going to be nice and easy to control. But now we need to make sure that it's going to be a little bit nastier than the rest of the models because we kind of need this uh, to be a pillow, not some kind of, uh, let's say, block. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we move those parts around so they will look nice and easy to follow. But I also want to put a little bit of emphasis on the fact that our object is going to have that extra, let's say, inner line in here. So I'm going to delete this part, and we're going to be building around it. So just so it's easier for me to control the mesh right now, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And we're going to continue. Okay, the top and bottom are slightly out of line. So I'm just going to do this. Okay, scale it down. And we're going to um, go again for the symmetry because I, th I think that it's going to be faster this way. And yes, so I wanted to have this kind of element poking outside. And I believe that this topology is going to be optimal because it's going to have a nice round edge. And it's not really going to cost me anything. So it's my lazy way of modeling those uh, details just by a little bit of experiments. And I as I mentioned, uh, sometimes uh, we have to experiment a little bit before we get to the end point of our model. And now, since we are on the topic, let's just uh, start filling this area with the pillow. So let's put it here, move uh, some of the parts. Okay, half of it needs to go because it's unnecessary. And we're going to be adding all of that nice thickness that we wanted. So uh, I only wanted this to be a small part, not as big as it is right now. So we're going to uh, slightly scale it, move it forward. And now we're going to be moving the elements uh, inside and outside. So let's just move them so that everything aligns really nicely. Okay, let's alt one here and alt one there. So it's going to be easier for us to apply all of that niceties. Okay, perfect. I kind of think I could have moved one of the vertices differently. So let's move this here. Actually, this is going to go there and this goes here. So we're going to have more aligned topology of the top and bottom. Um, 
I'm very um I, I like her language. It's very relaxing. My ear takes a rest. So uh, you mean my voice, I guess. But if it's the language, I'm also going to be uh, taking that as a compliment. So thank you very much. And English is indeed very nice. Uh, so let's continue. Okay. And I actually really like uh, this kind of compliment. It's uh, amazing feedback, guys. I, I kind of getting lush, uh, but yeah, it's so cool. Okay, so now we've got all of that uh, added, but we still kind of need another support loop around here. So I'm going to be moving those vertices just on the edge here. Uh, so it's going to make sure that the edges of my pillow once we're going to add a turbo smooth are not going to be too deformed okay what's going on here did i yes i did i did not connect the symmetry correctly sorry for that guys i'm going to be wasting some uh, more of your time now uh, let's continue okay uh, let's scale this down perfection love it really good job mike <laughs> no i really want to see your, uh, how you will perform the, this model and because i believe it's going to look fantastic once you're done with it and we're going to try to render it real quick uh, but we're not going to be adding uh, all the wrinkles because i think we're going to have uh, not enough time for that but we might just try it at some point okay so let's go that way i think we can okay and now since we're here let's just make sure to move it a little bit okay so we're in a funny spot because at this point we could leave it as, as is but i kind of want this line to be my outline right now for that object and i am a little bit unsatisfied with this topology so we're going to try to fix it in a second because i obviously want this to have nice even spacing but I also see that my topology kind of needs to be like that. So we're just going to make sure to get rid of some of the elements. And we're if we're going to just uh, make this into one vertex like that, like we did earlier, we're pretty much going to go back to the square one. So we kind of needed um, additional lines in the first place. But uh, this is going to allow us to get a little bit rounded, um, rounder back of our object. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more welding. Um, yes, and your voices. Thank you. Um, the sound of voice indeed. Okay, I, I that that's that's very nice of you. I am uh, I, I don't hear that often, so uh, you have to understand that uh, compliments like that always welcome. Uh, okay, let's continue, and we're going to be moving this part here. So now we've got nice and evenly spaced out topology obviously we can retopologize this even further by adding more edges but i'm not going to do so because it already will be looking very nice as a pillow but i promise that we're going to be also adding the stitching on our object uh, so we're going to do that in a second but let's make sure to scale down the bottom of our object as much as we can okay so scaling down now because of some mistakes that i make uh, made there are some elements that aren't supposed to be here you can see that there are rogue vertices that are left over because of my sloppiness so uh, overall you want to kind of look after those um, because you don't need them and you probably don't want them in your model to begin with because otherwise we're going to have a really bad time okay so uh with that out of the way i'm just thinking about this part where do i really need this element here i kind of don't but at the same time it doesn't bother me that much so does it okay now i'm, I'm going to keep it we're just going to continue and we're going to add the symmetry as we did the last time z-axis and we're just going to continue select connecting those elements in a nice manner for some reason they haven't really fixed the, all the issues with um, uh, with uh, symmetry in 3ds max but i uh, i'm really hoping they will at some point um let's check if there are any borders a nice way of checking if uh, your model has any flaws is actually selecting the border if the border would pro uh, let's say go all the way here that means that there's an opening in my model and i need to re-weld this but since there's none we're just going to continue now let's turbo smooth this okay perfection 
Now we're going to pretty much go back and this fills in the spot really nice. Okay, we could also uh, remodel some elements here just for the better element of the overall total uh, curvature. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be nice and round, so we kind of need to follow up with this turtle, uh, sh turtle uh, shell shaped element. And now we've got, we've got the majority of, my, of our model done. Okay, so Turbo Smooth goes in and we've got really nice pillow. So let's just add the symmetry to it, symmetry. But again, I forgot about my own tip. Let's just select this part, delete the symmetry and add the symmetry back in. So that way, Y axis, flip it, done. Turbo Smooth, if there are any uh, to look for any problems, convert to editable poly and we're done. We still need to add that uh, nice uh, line in here, so uh, you can see it there, right? So I'm going to show you how to do the sewing, and we're going to continue doing it on our model step by step. So this is our pillow. Let's check if we can just go back and select our background. It's pretty much supposed to be here, so let's just move this line. And to not make it cut too deep, I'm going to make sure to add the extrusion go all the way in and make it super, super small um, size and make sure that it cuts inwards, so negative value and uh, something around, uh, well, 10% of what you thought you should do. And we can see that now we've got really, really nicely emphasized uh, sewing, but it's just too much for me now. So what do we do? Before we actually add this uh, nice emphasis that we did, we could add the chamfer around it. So we're going to add the chamfer, okay, like this. So it's going to protect the border. Now we can go for the extrusion. Once we now add the extrusion, it's going to be way subtler than it was a minute ago. And you can see that now it's not as emphasized because there is not as much topology being deformed. And that's really going to be it. Additionally, what's your uh, your thought on TurboSmooth versus uh, Open Subdiv? Open Subdiv is really amazing, but in the end, it's actually going to be uh, almost the same as TurboSmooth. It's uh, Open Subdiv is way better for animation and for gaming. But in reality, uh, when it comes to modeling, Turbo Smooth is still going to be the same. Um, one huge plus of, of Open Subdiv is that it handles the topology of your UVW mapping a little bit better. So it doesn't distort your mapping as much. But at the same time, the creases and the modeling method of crease sets is just a little bit tedious and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, so in my case, I would say that it's a genius um, endeavor, but I don't see the genius of it that much as I am not really uh, using it in my day-to-day -day work. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of that sewing, so let's add the details. First uh, split that we have to do is going to be the most important one because we need to split the, to uh, the top part, or let's say our outline, from the rest of the object. That is why we went for extrusion, oh sorry, extrude line here, because it was just easier. Convert to a dual poly, double click, and let's just click on this one line. And now we're going to be making sure that we're going, um, oh, wait a second. I forgot about a step. So now uh, you can see that the bottom is actually empty and I kind of want this to have that nice outline as well. So cap this, it's going to look awful, but it's not a problem. We're going to inset this, but with a micro amount. So it's just so we're going to have enough to have some topology uh, or some geometry there. And we can now just move this if we need to, just so it's not as aggressive, but it's not necessary. So now when I add Turbo Smooth, the, the bottom is also going to have the nice finish uh, that it didn't have before. So it's going goes inside like that. We could retopologize it and actually make it nice uh, because we would be only connecting this to that, this to that, and so on. It's not going to be a big problem, but I don't want to do it, so let's not. Double click this part, split it, and now thanks to this split, this element is a totally separate object, uh, which is going to be very good for us because now I can double click here, 
and just simply add the same kind of sewing we had before. But I needed this to be I need this to be turbo smoothed before I add the sewing because I need higher count of topology. So we're going to actually uh, copy our object or just uh, create some kind of base if we need to go back and we messed up. I really do that in day to day work. Uh, in case I mess up, I like to do a, some kind of backup. Uh, so it's easier for me. Turbo smooth here, turbo smooth there, turbo smooth there. So now we can convert this object into a little poly. And now, since it is, we're going to be able to add the same extrusion we did a minute ago, but it's actually going to be uh, a little bit funnier because. Um, in this case, if we add the chamfer first and add a little bit of the distance, now we're going to have that extra line and we could do the opposite. We can do these two lines as our extrusion and that's going to create a totally different type of sewing, which is going to be a little bit more emphasized. I kind of don't like how much emphasized it is, so we're going to go for that lower the amounts and we can go opposite and okay I went a little bit too much uh, too far with the chamfer actually but if we go with the turbo smooth we can see that we can really play around with the detail to add some kind of really amazingly looking sewing on our objects and thanks to that it's going to look more realistic I kind of feel like it's looking good, but the distances are way too big. So let's uh, move back a few steps. Okay, so the chamfer is going to be way smaller. Okay, the chamfer goes in. And instead of that, we're going to use half of that value. Okay, and we can now go for extrusion and also use super duper small values. Okay, be very precise because it's all going to blow up if we don't attention so okay go inwards and we're done perfection now turbo smooth for the test and i kind of love it because it really emphasized that uh, sewing and we've got double line here so it's even more realistic and i like it because that's going to also now allow us to select one of the lines either this one or that one or we can create a new one if we want to and if we do, it's going to be actually quite cool. So go, right shape from selection, linear. Okay, so we've got those lines and look at that. Since I've got this linear approach, we could also go for the smooth approach, but it's going to be absolutely out of this uh, line. I mean, uh, out of this world. So it's going to be too far. Uh, so if we're going to stick to that, we're not going to get the result I really, really wanted. So you know what? I'm actually going to take one of those lines. Okay. I don't need you. I don't need you. Okay. Perfecto. And we're going to just create shape for selection. Smooth. Okay, the smooth line is going to be pretty much exactly what we need because it's going to be how the line is going to look like after turbo smooth, but it's a little bit too far. So again, it's not exactly it, but we can do a trick. Edit poly on top of it. Okay, so since we've got editable poly modifier on our object, and now we can select two lines. Okay, create shape from selection again. But now this is going to be different because we're going to do the linear that is prepared for another level of turbo smooth. So we're going to delete this. We don't need it any longer. And we're just going to select that part. Okay. Now, since we're on here, we're going to go to um, normalize spline. And by normalizing our spline, we can create the exact knot count that we need. So I'm going to go for a very high count, uh, like 300 is like probably going to be not even enough, but we're going to add that anyway. You know what? Let's go for a bigger number, 400. Convert this to a double poly, uh, sorry, a spline, renderable in viewport, and it looks really, really thick. So, okay, what do we do now? We first need to make sure that this, uh, those elements are going to be set to a corner. We don't want any additional edges in between. Now, since those are going to be cornered, we're going to break those. Break. We go for two, select every 
piece of geometry in our object. Now each geometry part is now going to be separate. So we select it, scale it somewhere around here, and we scale it, uh, scale all of those elements separately, but from the level of segments. So I select them and scale them. This is going to be uh, extremely cool because now we're going to lower the number of sides, lower the si thickness of our object, and we're just created a very nice looking sewing around our object. Look at that. It's barely visible. So it's not really something you should be adding that much. My how to make hot key from floor generator can you show? So uh, you can do it by either adding this uh, here, uh, this extra line, or you can also add a macro that's going to be um, just clicking the right button. So scripting, uh, you can go for a macro recorder. And for example, once you have the macro recorder on, we can also go for a scripting listener. So you're going to pretty much see exactly what you're doing because at the moment you're recording a macro. So let's clear this up. And now if I click here, you're going to be uh, prompted with mode panel, additional mode selection, turbo smooth uh, UI on. So pretty much we could use this as a separate window for us because now we can go to scripting uh, sorry customize customize user interface create a floating window so toolbars and uh, let's and go for new one name it uh, something okay and i can literally put that script in here so i can just add it in and then i can bind this movement or the what Okay, thank you. That's 3ds Max for you. So uh, yeah, uh, I didn't do auto saves. Great. Uh, now, <laughs> okay, so that's fantastic. Uh, but lucky for you guys, I've got a backup. Uh, so the backup is the older version of the model. Uh, so we're, it's not as refined. And uh, hey, uh, let's see if the auto backup is going to help. So that's that was unfortunate. GG indeed, GG, let's go. Uh, yeah, that's 3ds Max for you. Sometimes it's just going to hate what you're doing. The reason why it crashed is because, <laughs> yeah, Max Um Yeah, the reason why it crashed is that I was still recording a macro while nesting a macro install inside of the toolbar. So it was kind of doing the loopy -de loop and uh, kind of, yeah, now I get what happened. Um, yeah. The egg on my face, 3ds Max wins again. Uh, sorry for that. Nope, not your fault. It was all me. Uh, I was a little bit too fast uh, with that. Let's go indeed. Uh, now, uh, let's see if I can restore my last save point because maybe we still have it. If not, we're going to continue working with uh, my backup model uh, that I've actually created. So, uh, nope, uh, let's go file open and uh, 3ds max also is a little bit shy whenever i am um in the uh, live stream mode it gets a little bit anxious and it kind of crashes from time to time so we cannot blame it too much okay so that was on the moment we were doing the pillow and i kind of don't want to go back there so we're just going to allow this uh, 3ds max to um well stay there and we're going to oh this one is already collapsed hmm you know what we're going to continue regardless uh, so my plan <laughs> with the original model that we uh, that we were doing uh, was to select those edges and just simply do the same thing with uh, the extrude uh, but in that case it's, it would just take us this much and that would be the whole thing that we would be doing for the extra lines because we would be doing it on already turbo smoothed object so it would not have as much um, impact on the model itself so that way we're not deforming it too much 
but to make it a little bit less deforming you can also add a nice round chamfer around it so it's just going to smoothen out this uh, curvature but you want to make sure that the mod model that you're dealing with is already going to have some very nice curvature uh, to work with because otherwise if you add the turbo smooth it's going to just deform the object and it's not going to sorry it's going to make uh, some kind of pocket that's going to look very bad uh, so this is pretty much the stitching that I wanted to do and now we need to add those extra lines that I was working with as uh, with normalized spline and all that ah. I hate it. Anyway, let's create sheet from selection, linear, but linear is not going to work. We're going to go for turbo, one extra level turbo smooth, editable poly on top of that. Uh, so this way I'm going to se be selecting two lines that are already imprinted in here. So I'm not going to be losing any detail, but obviously it's going to be a bit more demanding for my computer at the moment. And since we're streaming, it's going, uh, 3ds Max is going to cry a little bit, but uh, well, it's going to take it uh, since it's crashed. So now go back, delete that. And now we've got this line. So let's uh, just redo the part that I wanted to show you because it's going to look fantastic. Uh, so unhide all, hide Udo. Wait a second. How many of you, uh, how many of those models do I have here? Uh, so yeah, I need to be less sloppy. Let's select this. Um, okay, we've got all of those lines, but those are not evenly spaced. So normalize spline is going to make sure that every knot is going to have a certain uh, distance between it. So it's very cool for uh, your topology of splines. Let's add, an, like, let's say, obnoxious amount. 200 should be enough. Convert this to a double spline. Now we're going to add renderable uh, renderability for the spline and lower the size of it. So let's go ahead and let's add microscopic doses. Okay, that's perfect. A bit bigger, please. Now six is going to be our lucky number. Go go ahead and select all the spline elements. Sorry, vertices. Let's break them. Select all the edges. Let's scale them. So those are going to be separate now. And if you really, 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 really want to go one step further and beyond, you can also go a little bit <laughs> higher on your polygon count by going for quad cup and adding some segments if you really want to uh, be obnoxious about it. But I think that quad cup like this is going to be enough. And you can see that we've created those diamond shaped elements and now once we are back to our main model we can re-add it in and you can see that we've got beautiful sewing in here so if it's going to be a product shot that you're going to be doing for some kind of company you now know how to add this as long as your topology is going to be at least good enough turbo smooth and look at that we've got all of that beautiful sewing around our cut and that's looking amazing. And that's a microscopic detail. You can tell, right? Uh, so, Mike, do you uh, use Marvelous Designer to uh, for cloth working? I sometimes do, but I actually um, am getting better and better with uh, the built-in 3ds Max cloth. And I must say that I like it a lot because it already built in. I also used Tie Flow for a while, and I believe that Tie Flow is at some point going to come up with their own marvelous designer for 3ds max i'm pretty sure that's going to happen uh, because they have really nice algorithms that can be marvelous indeed uh, i also had a, a super cool um uh, super cool plugin that um one of the um well one of the youtubers uh, was recommending but unfortunately once i bought it just five minutes after uh, they decided that they're closing their company. Uh, so they, but it was really amazing. I also use polycloth. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 3ds Max is scaring me now because uh, if everything goes down, I'm expecting that we're crashing. Uh, so guys, I kind of, because we crashed, uh, we didn't have enough time to build all of those models. And uh, I'm just going to show you how I got this pillow and uh, you're probably going to hate me for that. But what I did, is I went to the Chaos Browser and just looked for a sofa that looks good enough. And I was just waiting, uh, sorry, browsing through this up until I found something. I 
thought that this one looked good enough, I took this uh, replay sofa and took the pillow exactly from that model and put it in here. So uh, rescaled it, repositioned it, and that's it. So thanks to the sewing that we did and no prior, uh, no, um, no further work on this model, we can kind of uh, see that the model is pretty much done. Uh, it doesn't have the base at the moment. It's also a little bit lower quality than we, uh, the one we've created. But since we crashed and I'm a dummy uh, for not saving uh, any of my work along the way, uh, we're not going to see the uh, final effect, but I think that for a live stream we did really good. So all we need to do now, it would uh, need to do, is add two more lines and one line here, but that's going to be repeating the same process three times and we've already did this. Uh, also the original model was so much better. Uh, before we crashed. So I'm going to finish this model and we're going to be posting it on our platform. So everybody's going to be able to download it for free um, because, well, why not? Obviously, I'm going to be using my own pillow at that moment, uh, so that's it. If you want, guys, we can do a short Q&A, so uh, we're going to be able to talk about, uh, well, things that you're interested in. Uh, let's see who's here in our chat, and let's uh, answer some questions, as long as we're not going to be crashing 3ds Max. Uh, Mike, do you use Marvelous? Okay, uh, how would you take something like this, a mostly finished, already true smooth object, and uh, get a breakable low poly back out of it in a timely manner. So it all depends on what type of model I'm working with. As um, if it's going to be a model that I downloaded, I'm not going to be expecting that I'm going to be uh, refining it. But if I had to, and this would be something that I need to do because of, well, reasons, um, I would probably check what kind of topology, uh, topology I'm dealing with. Next step for me would be detaching each element step by step to see how what I'm dealing with. For example, uh, such elements can be re uh, really easily removed. But the easiest way of doing that would be to use retopology as a modifier because 3ds Max has a very nice way of doing it, things. Now, now, this object is only two and a half thousand polygons, but we can reduce that count by half. Uh, so we're going to be able to type in exact half or just something that we're going to be satisfied with. So I'm going to type in 800 and close my eyes and wait for it to work. The trick is that right now the topology is going to do some kind of topology here and weird topology there because those are entirely different parts. So the trick is to re-add the symmetry to your object once you're done, clear out the sewing line, but still this is oddly um, dense mesh. So let's go for lower number, 200. Compute. And now you can see that since those were, um, wait a second, symmetry off. Why? I didn't do the symmetry. Uh, wait a sec. What's going on here? Topology. Okay. So let's retopologize this now. Okay. So now it works really okay. So now I can go for the symmetry and make sure that I use the right side. So it's going to be clean. I would probably clean up, clean it up, uh, clean it up a little bit more uh, later on, or just remake it, rebake it. But it's going to take us. Uh, less time to do re the retopology that way because you can even see that the model is really nice. I could probably go for a little bit higher mesh density in this case to still be able to uh, work with it. This is what I do with most of the uh, straight out of factory models where I'm getting them from the manufacturers. This is what I do uh, with the symmetry to just make sure that uh, those are going to be easier to control. And you can see that it actually works really well, um, surprisingly well, to be honest. And then if I need to add any detail, I would probably conform some kind of uh, geometry on it or just bake uh, that using bevels if that's going to be necessary. But uh, I rarely do this because it's uh, something that you typically typically want to avoid um, with models that are downloaded because obviously it's going to take you a while to get the right result. Okay, uh, Redshift, Redshift Render Opinion Stability 
uh, Redshift, Redshift Renderer. Uh, let's see, because I remember the name, but I always confuse it with something else. So uh, I need to uh, Maxton Redshift. Okay, uh, GPU accelerated bias 3D Renderer Redshift. Uh, so Redshift uh, mean uh, biased uh, biased means that it's going to be always a little bit too um, too. Uh, funny it's going to be a vid video game level uh, style but to be honest from what i can see it's a rendering engine like um, any other i cannot say any bad word about it because redshift is a very good company and uh, if i recall correctly uh, they are uh, quite good at uh, at uh, with they created a few really good um things um because maxton uh, the, the company uh, this is not only but why, why does their logo look like gmail um okay so shading cameras yeah so this is pretty much it so yeah actually never tried it but i will have to because uh why not uh, the topo the everything looks nice around corners um do they have caustics pb uh, ERG clear sky okay tiles looks good looks good but I cannot tell you anything because I have no experience with it so I don't want to uh, just guess but looks fine uh, I would like to test the UI to be honest um, uh, sometimes Max just says no <laughs> yeah it's just Max it, it, I like to think about Max like it would be a five-year-old kid and sometimes it's just going to say no uh, yeah um, Mike, do you use Marvelous? Uh, how would you make something like the most finished? Uh, Mike, uh, should we upscale our images with AI instead of making longer renders with high resolution? You didn't hear this from me, but yes. Yes, you didn't hear this from me, honestly, but uh, there's no reason not to. And if the clients cannot see the difference and you can't see the difference, you shouldn't. But uh, if there are some details that you're going to be losing by upscaling yes it all depends what type of imagine uh, imagination the um, upscaling program you're using is going to have because sometimes for example uh, again i'm not uh, sponsored by them in any ways uh, but i yeah, like to use topaz and uh, gigapixel i actually bought the license uh, but uh, this time i'm going to say that uh, i'm going to say this I hate the way they uh, have their licensing because as soon as you buy the license, they're going to be bombarding you with all of the uh, questions. Hey, would you buy? Would you like to buy more? Buy more? Buy more? Th that for that reason, I'm never going to go back to their products because they're annoying like this. But um, I would say that the Gigapixel actually has a very uh, decent results. Probably um, some kind of uh, stable diffusion or something like that is going to be way better at it quite soon but since they are the guys that started it I'm pretty sure that they're going to be on board with the same technology quite soon and it's going to be way better so yeah um, upscaling is not cheating it's okay uh, Yep, you didn't hear that from me. Uh, sir, please tell me the difference between Corona and V-Ray Render. So uh, if you would be thinking about starting um, your journey with 3D, I would say Corona always because Corona is so much easier and friendlier to learn than V-Ray is. Uh, both Corona and V-Ray are really good and um, I don't think that we can compare them quality wise, wise because uh, one excels in one, uh, one area and the other in different areas. Uh, so to put it uh, in layman's terms, if you want to start your journey, V-Ray is going to be extremely unfriendly when it comes to UI, some solutions, and the amount of knowledge you have to have before you can click render. But uh, also, what I noticed is that V-Ray still has big problem of consistency. One object is going to look good in scene A, you have almost the same settings in the same uh, in the scene B, and, and you have totally different effect. Corona is not like that. Corona is consistent, it's predictable, and you're going to have 
just workflow that works for most of your work if you come up with some kind of solutions that work in one scene more than likely it's going to also work in the second one uh, so that's why i would go for corona at the moment but um, you also should know that corona was designed to be direct competitor to v-ray um, it was uh, onra uh, that uh, decided to um, uh, let's say switch his uh, master's um, work if i recall correctly when he was doing his phds uh to a more commercial manner so he started with a free version of corona to test it it was amazingly good the and uh, well it soon became what it is today but you cannot really uh, say that corona wasn't inspired by Vray in some way it wasn't a copy by no means it was uh it wasn't a, a uh, in any way a, pl a plagiarism it was just something that the creator thought that i can make it better and he did uh, so that's why corona was designed as a direct competitor for Vray to be easier faster and smarter so it was but now they're pretty much on the same level Okay, I did not hear that from you. Yep, same problem with V-Ray. Mike, do you think bucket rendering comes to Corona Render? Uh, yeah, you actually are. You actually know uh, should know that the bucket rendering is come uh, is coming to Corona Render quite soon uh, because it's probably going to be part of uh, Corona Eleven, which is coming out in well probably one or two months i don't have any specific info on that because i don't but uh, we're probably going to be hosting a special webinar on that to uh, talk about it because there's a lot of cool things that they're packed into it and it's going to be a big thing really uh so sir i have a low pc a ryzen 3 32 g um now 16 gigabytes of ram and nvidia uh, 1650 super 4 gigabytes ddr6 how long will uh, be safe to render c on cpu until it starts heating so there's no such thing as um unsafe um rendering because uh your computer your uh, your uh, pc your processor has a built-in mechanisms that will say hey if my if i'm getting too hot you're not rendering it's either going to drop its performance to some very low level so it can cool down a little bit or it's just going to say uh the same thing that 3ds max just said to us i'm out and it's going to reset itself uh, so there's no way of you overheating it unless you turn off all the uh, safety nets but it's really not going to be possible so my suggestion for you if you're going to be rendering on a laptop get yourself a cooling pad the one that you put place beneath your laptop and it has fans uh, fans uh, below it also keep in mind that if you're going to be using your laptop on in on a sofa or in your bed it's going to just um, suck in all of the dust so from time to time make sure to take it to a tech guy and clean it up from all of the dust that's uh, gathering i make uh, at least um, monthly maintenance on my computer which is on my desk always so it rarely gets any dust but i really make sure that it doesn't eat too much of it right now uh, before that it, it was on the ground and it was munching up the dust like it well like there was no tomorrow plus it was eating or let's say uh, some of the dust was uh, also um gathering with my dog's uh, fur so it was actually the only solution that i could come up with to place my computer a little bit higher so it's going to be safer uh okay uh cpu will throttle down if anything it will m uh, maintain stable temperatures yes that's exactly it uh Sakar, don't worry about heating that's exactly it and if really something happens and the temperature spikes it's going to just reset uh, Mike, do you have a problem of overheating your Threadripper on there? Uh, on there is uh, no load at all. No, when there's no load at all, it's actually going to have a stable temperature. So CPU Z temp, uh, we can test it out. Um, I think this one, um, temp, core temp. 
uh, this was the one. So I actually have uh, these two small programs. One is to monitor all of the clock speeds and what's going on with my computer if I'm uh, playing around with it too much. But I also like to test or see all of my threads and all of my computer to see pretty much what it's doing right now. So I'm not rendering, but I'm um, the computer is on since yesterday because I was rendering and I wasn't yet um, resetting it. Plus, it, I did some work today. I also uh, am streaming currently. So those are all of my clocks on the Threadripper 2970 uh, WX uh, that I'm using. But I'm going to be upgrading my computer probably in, next year uh, as soon as the new newest Threadripper um, comes out. I'm going to just probably take the uh, previous version because it's uh, almost like iPhones uh, they kind of drop in price a little bit 55 degrees Celsius uh, at Intel um, is there any chance of CPU burning if it produces too much heat no there's no such thing because only if you're if you would go inside of your computer onto the uh, BIOS and turn off uh, or uh, change the temp the critical temperature but this is something that you're probably not going to ever do and no there is no such thing as viruses that will burn your computer because it has a built-in safety um a safety measures that it just prevent any kind of overheating um so first of all thank you for the effort do you know if uh, chaos vintage is coming to corona yes it's definitely going to be work uh, there's going to be some kind of way of translating the files because right now what's uh, happening uh, in the industry is a 3ds max uh, with uh, unreal and uh, disney pixar and all of those bigger companies are bundling up to create something called usd so it's um universal universal description format uh, that's going to uh scene description format and uh, that's going to um allow everybody to create something let's say a material that's going to be physically based then you can export it into usd file so something like fbx and anybody ever is going to be able to read it because it's going to be universally defined. So it's going to probably also be easier to translate stuff from Corona to V-Ray, from V-Ray to Vintage, from Vintage to Blender, and so on and so forth. So at some point, we're going to have one unifying um, format that's going to be extremely powerful. And Mike, what's the... Um, Mike, that's uh, the Pron script. Does it work? Um, I mean, prone and that does work, but it's only it was only needed for the older versions or if you really have a small amount of RAM to clean your cache. So a prone scene is good, but if you're using 3ds Max 2021, uh, if I recall correctly, that was the one that didn't have the ability to protect itself from any kind of malicious. Uh, software inside of the scene so there is pos there is a possibility that prune scene is actually something very helpful and i highly recommend those guys because they did some good job to actually save us from that um, virus uh, i hope that they didn't also create it um 3900k runs 100c on water cooling while rendering literally uncoolable wow i didn't know that uh, that's really bad uh, my computer rarely excels 86 uh, degrees but it boils the water there oh wow um, sir please share your email for work sent uh, so that's info at viz academy co uk uh, i think that this is going to be it for today um so just uh, so everybody knows uh, what we're uh, what who i am and what we are uh, viz academy is a uh, rendering school that will teach you how to create uh, beautiful renders in less than seven weeks you can check out our amazing students work on our instagram uh, so i highly recommend you to 
to look for Viz Academy UK there. Uh, there's also some amazing work by our students. We try to post as uh, only work by our students, but sometimes we kind of also want to uh, give a little bit of a shout out to some of our tutors because uh, well, those guys are amazing. Um, so obviously you want to check those out. And for all of our students that come to Viz Academy, we have the whole Autodesk suit available. So this means that uh, by joining us, you're going to be able to download uh, 3ds Max, Revit, um, AutoCAD, all of the educational licenses are there for, uh, are yours for, uh, are yours for the taking so make sure to join us as soon as possible uh, plus uh, while joining we're uh, giving our students a bunch of discounts for a lot of stuff most important one is the discount for corona renderer also students license available uh, available so that's something that you cannot miss and uh, next week we're going to be going for another uh, webinar like this one but this time we're going to be talking about multi-pass it's either going to be this time or in two weeks but we're going to prepare something extra for you uh, also be on the lookout because corona 11 is coming out quite soon so we're going to and do something about uh, with that oh by the way i forgot to tell you about that one thing so uh, 3d architect uh come on um okay i forgot the website oh my god uh, CG Architect, uh, actually, we were a part of the beautiful journey of judging the contestants. Uh, soon we're going to have some excellent uh, winners, but more about it later. Uh, so I'm going to follow up on this topic in one week. So this is all for today. Thank you very much for your, um, uh, for your attention. We're going to see each other in one week. So be there or be square. Once again, thank you and see you in, in one week. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.